Hi there, my name is Joel and this is my YouTube channel. For today's intro to this video, I wanted to give you a few facts. Fact number one, this squid is really annoying. Why does he keep trying to push me off? Fact number two, I have a big ego. And fact number three, please subscribe to make my ego bigger. This isn't a fact, I lie to you. I lie a lot in my intros. Anyway, let's start the video. Now in Minecraft, we have lots of different type of stone. We've got your regular old basic smooth stone, which can be turned into cobblestone. We've got your granites, we've got your diorites, we've got your black stone and, oh, what's this? Yeah, let's just not talk about that one. And these stones all look very different. We also have andesite, but I'm putting that with this stone here because look how similar it looks. It looks really similar. And if I looked at these different types of stone, I would know what type of building I would want to build. Like this one, probably something a bit more gothic. This one, nice and happy and bright. This one, more traditional and this one, sort of, you know, more ruined and old. In fact, this type of stone can be converted quite a lot. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be building four different castles, each for the different type of stone and each different and unique in their own way. Let's kick it off with a nice time lapse. So we're going to start off with the regular stone combination. You know what? Let's add some shaders on here. Oh, doesn't that look so much better? As you can see, I've laid out a castle there with some orange wool and I kind of raised it up a little bit to make it sort of on these rocks here. And I've actually transitioned it from like regular smooth stone to some andesite to some cracked stone bricks to finally some stone bricks on the top, which I think makes a really nice sort of smooth transition up as you can see here. I had to add on some extra stuff for the rocks on the side just to make it look a bit taller. And we've also gone for another sort of theme with this, with this red and yellow for the flags and the sides etc. I've also added some diagonal walls on as well as I feel like those just make it look a bit different. If you add just straight walls it can look a bit plain so I add some slightly diagonal walls, some directly diagonal walls and some straight ones as too because we like a mix of everything and you can see we've used spruce to complement the stone bricks. I think these two colours go really well together and the main building itself has lots of detail, quite a few walls and as you can see we just finished off with some bone milling of the grass. That time lapse went a lot quicker than I was expecting. So let me do some explanation of some other things. You can see we've got some water. That could be like a sewer coming out from the castle there into a little pond there. Although that's probably not a very nice pond, is it? <laughs> if that's the case. You can see the diagonal wall I was talking about there. And you can see how I've phased up from, you know, like cobblestone to andesite to smooth stone to cracked to stone bricks. I think that looks really nice. We've got a mix as well of circular towers with this one here. Kind of circular, but pretty much square. As you can see here, another quite fat circular one. And then finally, a very square one here. This is the only one with a roof as well. I wanted to do more of the turret style for this castle. I think this sort of castle really suits the turret style. We've even added on a little balcony up here. We got one of these on each side. I forgot to add a door on it, but that's fine. And we used fences for windows here. So this is kind of like a old style castle. I feel like when you look at castles like this, they're always quite old. So that's why I did that. But I'm very happy with this one. I think it looks really good. And you can probably see the one we're going to be moving on to on the right. It's going to be a bit more mountainous as we're heading on to the Diorite Castle. So for this next castle, I decided to set the scene a little bit and I raised it up really high, made it very mountainous. And in fact, I added in another little mountain there and some water and made it on this sort of like island in the middle of this lake here. And after marking out where the build is going to go, I actually decided to add in some mountains round the back as well to really set the scene that this castle is in a far away sort of mountain area standing out. And if I think of like white colored castles, I always think of like, you know, Asian architecture, specifically, you know, like East Asian architecture, you know, like Japan and China, etc. I'm not sure which exactly this one fits into, so I'm sorry about that. But I went for a big old tall castle. It's one massive building and it's got like loads of different types of roofs, some sort of like nice texture, etc. And it ended up looking okay. I'm not super happy with it. I actually think it looks fairly decent, but not superb. But what I do like is this little section here. We made a little bridge across to a little tower which just linked up so nicely I think this looks perfect and this thing is huge like if you look at the other castle over there that's a pretty big castle this one is so much bigger and I really think it looks nice on the lake here as well oh look at that doesn't that look beautiful especially if I change the dime of day look doesn't it feel like a sunset castle I wonder what it looks like at night oh I like that 
But let's change it back to here. So as you can see, we've got this mountainous area, this castle. It's not symmetrical all the way around. It is in fact even. It's split down the middle here. So we've got a big sort of triangle section here. Then on this side here, you can see we've got some smaller sort of triangles like so. I think that looked really cool. I've realized I've left the wool orange here. This is not meant to be this. There we go. That looks a bit better. Oops. But you can see it leads onto this small little tower here, which I really like. It's kind of just like, you know, a little baby brother of this one here. Or sister. You never know. Don't pay too close attention to the mountains. I didn't want to spend too long on these things because, you know, it's just the background. I know this looks like I've used some other types of stone, but oh no, no. This is coral. This is dead coral. I did that on purpose because we're only meant to be using one type of stone here and it's diorite. And people never really build with diorite and that's because it's kind of an ugly block just by itself but I think when you add in dark oak etc I think it looks really good this bridge especially looks really cool but there you have it an Asian inspired castle using the diorite block next we're gonna go for a granite block and I searched up on Google red brick castles and the main thing that I found was that it was all one big building so instead of having you know like walls surrounding it etc it was just sort of like you know a European style big building where it's kind of got you know one big tower and then it's got some roofs etc most of the castles we've had before haven't really got any roofs on them but i use some never brick roofs for this and i've said roofs way too many times now and we got like one big central building then we got these other little buildings off to the side and a big tower at the front and it actually ended up turning out really really cool we used lots of detail on this one we got the big tower on the right here as well which is a bit more circular and we sort of added in a nice garden in front of it as well but there was one thing we were missing which i'm going to actually go add on right now and that is this command hopefully it should add a little bit of texture to the build yeah there we go as you can see that's just a little bit of something but it makes a slight difference which i quite like also you probably noticed on this build and the last build i've added like glowing lights behind the glass here that's just because normally you'd have like an interior where it'd be nice and lit up inside but obviously I've not done that because I'm very lazy. So instead, we've just put some glow stream behind it, which I think makes a really cool effect, to be fair. But I really like this castle because it's kind of like a house and castle combined. And there's a lot of detail on this. We've got loads of different windows where we can have loads of different things. We've got different styles of tower. We've got kind of like, you know, a traditional sort of turret tower, which matches these ones here. But then we've also got this tall, spindly, more circular one here, which I think looks really nice as well, where I've sort of splayed it out at the bottom. And one thing I really like about this is this sort of mini entrance hall down here, which is kind of outside where you could, if it was like modern day, you'd drive your car up here, get out, get inside sort of thing if you were the queen or whatever. But there's loads of details detail on this thing and honestly this is probably one of my favorite ones we've done yet. I do like both the other ones but it's so cool being able to use the different blocks and make so many different types of designs and one thing you can't really see but I sort of faded the windows up from white to gray to darker gray which I think looks really cool but the shroom like kind of blows it out and the garden on this one is a bit neater. I think probably in real life the garden would be a little bit neater than this. I just sort of did this because I didn't want to spend too long in a garden when the main focus is the castle itself, which I'm very happy with. And we've only got one castle left, and that is the Blackstone Castle, which I think is going to look a bit uh, more spooky than these other ones we have here. Now this castle is going to be a lot taller than the other ones because I've gone for very sort of sharp angles, lots of spikes, etc. And that's because we're gonna have a lot of towers. We've got the main central section of this castle here, which I'm working on right now. We copied and pasted those towers all the way around. And then we got working on the other ones. I also wanted this one to have like quite a strong glow. So I went for some yellow glass which gives this kind of like glowing effect, like the windows are massive contrast to the rest. And we've also got these towers on the side as well, the smoke coming out, because it's quite an evil looking castle and I always like associate fire coming out of towers and stuff with evil. We got a main gate as well, but apart from that, we just added on some walls. Let's go have a look around this thing. So there you go. I think it looks pretty cool, very glowy indeed. I really like the purple 
mixed in with this black stone as well with these crimson stripped wood planks. We've also got this section at the back which you couldn't really see on the time lapse but this more squarer sort of tower there which I think looks really cool. Not sure it's my favourite thing and honestly if I was to do this again I'd probably make it a lot bigger and just have a lot more like towers going everywhere and stuff. We've got a small little bridge connecting these ones here. I meant to make a bridge connecting those but I must have forgot. Oops. Oh well. And we've got a little section here as well. I think it looks good. It's got quite a cool look about it but Apart from that, it's a, it's a pretty standard castle. Oh my gosh, I've just realized. Sandstone's a block. Oh, oops. Oh well. But there are four castles, all different shapes and sizes, all different types of blocks. No sandstone, but maybe I'll leave that for the future. Unfortunately though, guys, that is all we've got time for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy. Make sure to leave a like and comment and subscribe if you're new. And I shall see you another time. Goodbye.